Lurking beneath these waters is a brightly colored, beautiful, flowing killer. It's not the usual suspect, which we would consider to be palytoxin. Most reef keepers know these days that palytoxin is not to be trifled with. I speak from experience because I had a run in with palytoxin, but luckily I'm still here to tell the tale. I do have a video about that, but this video is about Goniopora. My story starts with preparing to catch a fish, namely a lawnmower blenny. In the middle of the screen there, you can see a drain hole. That's where the blenny likes to hide. I need to catch him at some point to get him out of here and upstairs into the main display. I need to block this hole while the fish is not in it so that he can't go in there. So I had my husband prepare one of these for me that I could keep right handy the next time I saw the fish out of the hole. I'd be able to grab it and jam it in there before he could get back to it. I didn't plan ahead very well. I should have also had a glove handy, but I didn't think I would need one. I thought it would be a simple matter of just grabbing the pipe, reaching down and jamming it in the hole. Come the day, it didn't fit. I saw the fish out, I grabbed the pipe, I messed around down there for I don't even know how long, maybe five minutes, moving rocks around, trying to get this thing in there because I thought it was just the wrong angle. Yeah, no, it did not fit. In the process of doing this, I rested my arm against the side of the tank and on a frag rack. This frag rack, yeah, I jammed the inside of my elbow against this goniopora. I probably had contact, oh, for a good 10 or 15 seconds before I realized I was actually probably damaging a coral. That's what went through my mind, and I quickly moved away. I carried on with what I was doing, realized it wasn't going to work, and just pulled my arm out of the tank. When I pulled my arm out of the tank, I rested it against the edge here while I was trying to clean up the mess that I had made. You can see there's lettering on here and it's raised. It's quite rough and sharp. And I felt that. I thought that's what I was feeling. It was irritated. It was kind of stinging. It was itchy. And I assumed it was because of the texture that was on the edge of the tank where my arm was pressing down as I leaned in with my other arm to move stuff back to where I wanted it. Yeah, that's what I thought at the time. When I was done cleaning up, I looked at my arm and that whole area inside my elbow was bright, bright red. That's when I remembered, oh, goniopora. The green one I had stung Cyphastria to the point where it almost killed it. Those things do sting, I knew that. Then I did some reading about whether they produce any kind of a toxin that's harmful to humans. I couldn't find very much. I did learn that yes, they do produce a toxin called goniopora toxin, but there was no information about anyone having a run-in with goniopora that resulted in negative consequences. So although I was a little panicky when I started reading because I went, oh boy, that's a sensitive area. Uh, the skin isn't very thick there. Yeah. I wondered whether it got into my bloodstream. I, I was pretty panicked until I couldn't find any information about any humans having negative impacts after encountering goniopora toxin. I learned that goniopora is considered a polypeptide toxin and impacts sodium and calcium channels. I don't know what that means. I tried to find out what it means, but it would have meant reading pages and pages and pages and looking stuff up and I was satisfied to know that the studies that were done on small creatures, invertebrates and frogs and things like that, there were impacts of the toxin but there was nothing at the human level and there is an antidote. There is some sort of substance that can be administered to counter the effects of the goniopora toxin. So this reassured me and made me feel much better. But I was in a lot of pain. I found this as part of a study on sea anemone toxins. 
When an individual is stung by nematocysts, local inflammations, including severe pain, redness, and edema are immediately induced by toxins. That explained it. Here's what it looked like about an hour after it happened. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, does it? But it hurt like a son of a bitch. So I put some anti-itch spray on it. Yeah, don't do that. That just made it worse. I rubbed the stuff in and I effectively ended up just spreading it around underneath the skin. So then I washed that off with cold water when I realized it was going to be a problem and I resorted to the good old standby calamine lotion. The calamine lotion did the trick and after I washed it off you can see here how the redness has largely disappeared but there's still marks on my skin and it still really hurt. You can also see how widespread it is now. This is the result of me rubbing it, I think, with the anti-itch spray, and I probably made it a little bit worse by rinsing it with the cold water, because once again I was rubbing it. So, going back, I wouldn't touch it, I would just go straight for the calamine. In this video, you can see the effect on my skin. I actually did expect it to blister. It looks like a burn. Yeah, it was really uncomfortable. To ease this burnt feeling and relax my skin, I put some petroleum jelly on, and it really did help. Over the course of the couple of hours this was all going on, I had an intense headache, my face was really flushed, and my left hand was tingling. I think some of these symptoms were anxiety, probably. Nevertheless, they were there. After 24 hours, the pain and discomfort were largely gone. I could still feel it, but it didn't hurt. You can still very faintly see the marks on my skin. And 48 hours later, all that's left is what looks like a very faint bruise. You might think the title of this video felt like clickbait. I don't see it that way. In all the reading I did, I could find nothing about anyone keeping a reef and having been stung by a goniopora. I have three goniopora. My original intention was to create a goniopora garden across the front of my new tank, but I've kind of changed my mind. I have the red one, the killer, and this little one, which, to be honest, this is as much as the polyps have ever extended in the three months that I've had it so I don't know if it'll survive. I also have this green one. It's a similar type to the red one. It used to be huge and flowing. You can see it in my Red Sea tank. It's slowly recovering, but I don't know if it will ever really come back. Once they start to decline, apparently, that's it. But we'll see. Will I make a Ganyapura garden? I don't know. I'll keep the three. I'll see how they do. I'll probably put them at the front of the tank and we'll go from there. So I'm kind of regarding this as a public service announcement. What if I had been fragging a goniopora without gloves and got it into a cut on my hand? Or what if I was wearing gloves but I touched my eye or my lip? It could have been really bad. I don't know. There's no information out there. Maybe it wouldn't be bad, but why take the chance? So if you're fragging goniopora, handling goniopora, don't be casual about it. I got stung pretty bad. It hurt for a while and I still have a scar. The original sting was 10 days ago. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, why not give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Stay safe, everybody.